The main objective in the sport of AFL is to score more points than your opponent to win the game. And forwards are what propelled this scoring objective forward with goal kicking and assisting abilities. Over the 120 something years the VFL and AFL have been running, there have been some dominant forwards. Players who increase winning percentage, bag goals and raise the ceiling of their team. No team is truly great without a good key or small forward on their roster. So in today's video I'm going to be walking through my top 10 best forwards of all time and explain why I place players where I do. Little disclaimer before we begin, this is not including Sandful, Waffle or players from other leagues as I just simply don't know enough about them, even with me being a South Australian. Also this list was hard to make as there were no real lists for inspiration and so many good forwards that miss out here, so my opinion can be changed. Make sure to leave some constructive comments down below. Sorry for the long intro, but without further ado, let's get into it. Hold on a second. Only about 2% of you guys are actually subscribed. Only 2%. It only takes about 2 seconds to subscribe and it really helps and lets me know what videos you guys like to see and what you don't. I'm doing a Guernsey giveaway at 1000 subs, so get stuck in. Cheers and join the team today. First of all, let's go through some honourable mentions. Tony Modger, Matthew Richardson, Brendan Favola, Nick Rewalt, Jack Rewalt, Jonathan Brown, Matthew Pavlich, Barry Hall and Bernie Quinlan. I did say there were a few. So many of these players were close to sneaking into the list, but just didn't make it. And obviously, there are some tremendously good players in this section. Finally, starting the official list at number 10 with Peter McKenna. I'll admit that before the making of this video, I wasn't too familiar with McKenna and his career as a whole. McKenna played for both Collingwood and Carlton in the 60s and 70s, spending most of his career in the black and white over 11 plus years. Holding the AFL record for the most consecutive games with at least a goal at 121, Peter was elite at quick and efficient leading patterns, as well as goal kicking, usually through the means of a drop punt, a controversial choice at the time. He kicked 874 goals and 470 points, averaging 4.6 majors a game, 12 disposals and 5.8 marks. Three 100 goal seasons, two Coleman medals and one All-Australian selection cap off McKenna's awards case. It's also worth mentioning that McKenna is the leading all-time goal kicker for players with less than 200 AFL or VFL games. He ranks 10th in all-time goals and also 10th on this ranking. He hasn't placed any higher due to the fact that he played back in the 60s and 70s and some stats just aren't comparable to today's game. He also never won a premiership and only received two common medals which when in company with other players on this list is not actually a lot. Coming in at the ninth spot we have John Coleman. It was impossible not to include the guy who the goal kicking medal for each season is named after and a player who averaged an astonishing 5.5 goals per game. Coleman showed amazing skills and determination for his time, most of his short career taking place in the early 50s. In six seasons with the Bombers, Coleman amassed 537 goals, 300 goal seasons, two VFL premierships, and five quote-unquote Coleman medals, aka the leading goal kicker of the league award at that time, and one All-Australian selection. He played before the time of counting stats such as marks and disposals, so it's hard to comment on that portion of his game. But his jumping ability was noted, and his supernatural marking ability. A pioneer of the game, there are a few reasons why he doesn't rank any higher though. Coleman only played 6 years in his career, a total of 98 games for Essendon, suffering a career ending knee injury in 1954. He also played in an earlier era where the competition wasn't as good, but of course was still a spectacular player. Peter Hudson slides in at the 8th position on this list. Across 9 years at Hawthorne, Hudson displayed elite goal kicking and still holds the highest average in VFL AFL history at 5.6 snags per game. He also managed to amass 150 goals in a season and won the grand final later that year. Peter was renowned as an excellent reader of play, a safe pair of hands and was only reportedly held to less than a goal in 4 games in his career. Over his playing days, Hudson kicked 727 goals and 330 points, also averaging 6 marks and 13.6 disposals a game. He also received 4 common medals, 1 VFL Premiership and 2 All-Australian selections. One thing that holds Hudson back of course is the era he played in. Starting to sound like a broken record here, but it's true. And the fact that he spent a large amount of his career in the Tasmanian Football League, or the Tanful for short. He also dominated this level of course, and it would have been interesting to see the heights his playing days could have reached if he spent longer in the VFL. An oldie but a goldie, Gordon Coventry lands at spot number 7. A true OG of the league's all-time greats, Coventry was ahead of his time in terms of goal kicking ability and contributing to a winning brand of footy. Representing Collingwood in the 1920s and 30s, Coventry's career held a lot of firsts that stay true and value in today's game. He was the first player to do the following, play 300 VFL games, kick 100 goals in a season, led the league's goal kicking tally 5 times and kick 1000 VFL goals his total contribution ending at 1,299 major scores. Gordon also played in winning brand of footy, winning 5 VFL premierships across his career 
along with six common medals and four 100 goal seasons. Obviously error comes into play, same as the others so far, but this won't be a factor as much as we move further up the rankings. In the sixth position on this list we have Matthew Lloyd of the Essendon Bombers. The most modern player on the rankings so far, Lloyd was renowned for his accuracy and presence up close to the goals, so much so that he was asked to help Max King with his goal kicking ability after his performance on Friday night against Brisbane. Playing in 270 games for the Dons as well as captaining them for three years, Lloyd ended up bagging 926 goals, 424 points and sits currently at 8th on the all-time goal kicking leaderboard. He was noted as having powerful leads and strong hands, as well as use of his physical attributes to be serviceable in a defensive capacity. Throughout his career, Matty averaged 3.4 goals, 6.3 marks and 13 disposals a game, and picked up two 100 goal seasons, three common medals, one premiership and five All-Australian selections. A very worthy set of awards in his cabinet. One of the best players in recent memory, Lloyd was one of the best at putting the ball through the big sticks, and that's why he ranks this highly. A superstar of the game for as long as I can remember, Buddy Franklin lands at the number 5 spot. One of the true icons of today's league, Buddy is as dominant as a key forward has been throughout the past 17 years of his career. Not a lot needs to be said here. I'm assuming if you're watching this video, you like AFL, you know the extent of not only Buddy's ability, but also his impact on the game and its fans. Throughout his time at both Hawthorne and Sydney, Buddy has bagged 1,036 goals, 722 points at the time of recording, and still counting. He averages 3.1 goals a game, 5.5 marks and 15 disposals, and has picked up the most recent 100 goal season in the league. Four common medals, two premierships with the Hawks in 2008 and 2013, and a whopping eight All-Australian selections cap off his awards. A freak of nature and one of the best to ever do it, but he cracks the top five on my list, but still has potential to move up. I mean, with a move to Brisbane on the cards, who really knows? Coming in at the fourth position on this list, just missing out on the podium finish is Wayne Carey. And I know what everyone is saying, what? You put him in your best players of all time video, what gives? And to that I say, it's complicated. It took me about a week to decide where to place it. But it's also my video, so the decision stands. And also, I say make sure you give that video a watch, link in description. Carey is definitely considered one of the best AFL players of all time among fans. Personally, he's up there for me, but not in the upper echelon of top three. That being said, to make this list, I based it more on goal kicking, longevity, and ability to raise a team's ceiling and Kerry just doesn't have those elite goal kicking averages and the total number of goals to match. Obviously he was a brilliant player, with elite marking ability and great leadership for the most part, so that kind of explains my thinking for this placement. And I'm preparing for some criticism in the comments, so have at it. I'm not even sure if this is the right decision. But nevertheless, Kerry kicked 727 goals, 457 points across his time at North and Adelaide, averaging 7 marks, 17 disposals and leading the race in two premierships as well as receiving seven All-Australian selections. It's also worth knowing that he never picked up a Coleman medal or a 100 goal season, but his impact was shown in other aspects of his game. Gary Ablett Senior comes in at the third spot on this ranking. Again, same situation as Kerry, one of the best players of all time, but not the top of the list. Sort of makes sense if you think about it, sort of doesn't. I'm willing to admit my logic is flawed to some degree. But Gary Senior was the dominant force for Geelong in the 80s and 90s. An illustrious 15 year career produced so many moments such as that all iconic one handed mark where he seemed to defy gravity and just float. It's literally the stuff of legend. Renowned for his goal kicking and high flying abilities, Gaz was a supernatural freak in his day, managing to slot 1,031 goals, 690 points across his career, averaging 4.2 a game. He averaged 6 marks and 15 disposals, showcasing 3 100 goal seasons, 3 common medals, 4 All Australian selections and even receiving a Norm Smith on a losing team in 1989 against the Hawks, kicking 9 majors in the process, one of only 4 players in history to win on a losing team to this day. A non-stop highlight reel, Ablett Senior lands in at a podium finish here at the number 3 spot. And the runner up for the best forward in AFL history is Jason Dunstall. Chief is an icon of the game now, from his appearances in commentary to the long-running Fox footy program Bounce, but it's also worth knowing that he was an incredible player back in his day. Across 14 years with the Hawks, Chief bagged 1,254 goals, 641 points, showcasing amazing accuracy and ability to kick goals consistently and at a high level, earning him third place on the all-time goals leaderboard. He averaged 4.7 goals per game as well as 6.6 .6 marks and 12 disposals. Dunstall's accolades don't disappoint. Him receiving three common medals, four premierships, and seven All Australian selections during his time in the league. He falls just short of the top spot, just because the player who steals the crown is the best pure goal kicker and dominant force of all time up forward. And that leaves the one and only Plugger as the best forward in AFL history. 
The leading goal kicker of all time, Lockett bagged countless goals at both St Kilda and Sydney, reaching a final count of 1,360 goals, 590 points in only 281 games, also displaying legendary accuracy in the process. Plugger averaged 6 marks and 10 disposals across 18 AFL seasons, bagging 6 100 goal seasons, kicking 132 in a season at St Kilda, as well as picking up a Brownlow medal, 4 Coleman's and 5 All-Australian selections. He's the only four on this list who won the Brownlow medal for just his pure goalkeeping ability, as Kerry had greater impact around the ground. This just shows how utterly dominant Plugger was, a moving fridge with a massive frame, great hands and a punishing leg. The only thing that defies Lockett is an elusive AFL Premiership, an honour he never got to hold. But nevertheless, without a doubt he's the best AFL VFL forward that has played in the league's 126 year history. There's only one Tony Lockett, and that statement holds true to this day. Well that wraps up my somewhat controversial list featuring the best AFL forwards of all time. Thank you guys so much for watching. This vid took a while to make, so make sure you leave your opinions in the comments down below. And I might even take some of your opinions into consideration. Hope you guys enjoyed, and remember to like and subscribe for future Sportsfield content. Have a good one, and cheers.